I'm Dr. Wynn. And I'm Dr. Coleman. And we're here at the ocean so we can get a more in-depth understanding of the coral reef biome. So we can learn about these fauna and these flora. But to do that, I think we have to turn it to fish first. So here we go. Three, two. You ready, Dr. Wynn? You ready, Dr. Coleman? Three, two, one. Fauna and flora. Examples of flora include zooxanthellae, which lives inside the polyps and coral. In exchange for the protection the coral provides, zooxanthellae provides the coral with needed nutrients. Seagrasses live in between the coral reefs, and they transfer nutrients to the coral. Their roots are adapted to keep the plant in place during strong ocean currents. When the seagrass dies, it helps to create future plant growth. Mangroves grow behind the coral reefs. They grow above the seawater and their roots protect from the sediment overpowering the coral. Fauna. Due to the complex structure of coral reefs, with their many nooks, crannies, and hiding spaces, fish have adapted a body structure to easily maneuver through the coral. In overwater, fish have adapted their bodies to swim faster. But within the coral reefs, fish have adapted bodies that are flat and maneuverable. Fish found in coral reefs also have bright coloring to help with mating or camouflage. Due to the wide variety of prey found in coral reefs, the fish have developed a generalized feeding structure to take advantage of the biodiversity. Lastly, seasonal animals such as coral have adapted toxins to keep away predators. We're here in the coral reef. In the coral reef, we get about 80 inches and 203 centimeters of precipitation a year. It really depends though, wherever in the coral reef we wanna go, cause it varies like in different coral reefs how much precipitation you get. The Great Barrier Reef gets the most precipitation. They get the most precipitation during their rainy season, which starts in September and ends in March. Coral reefs mainly form in the tropics since they favor temperatures between 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 to 27 degrees Celsius. They also tend to develop well in areas with a lot of sunlight penetration. Coral reefs need sunlight since individual polyps which contribute to the growth of corals contain symbiotic algae. The algae require light to aid photosynthesis. The coral benefits by utilizing some photosynthesis that leak off the algae, hence offering the algae a safer environment to thrive inside the polyps. The different and scintill scintillating colors of shown by corals are as a result of diverse species of algae with slightly different pigments. Our energy system includes the sun. The sun is the initial source of energy for our ecosystem. Through photosynthesis, phytoplankton, algae, and other plants, light energy is converted into chemical energy. As animals eat plants or other animals, a portion of this energy is passed on. So I'm sure you're wondering by now where we're globally located. Our biome is located within the ocean, but it's separate from the ocean biome. It's located in a shallow, clear portion of the ocean in mostly tropical areas. These areas where we are located include the coasts of East Africa, South India, Australia, Florida, the Caribbean, and Brazil. Our corals need clear water that lets sunlight through. We don't, they don't thrive very well when the water is opaque. Sediment and plankton can cloud water, which decreases the amount of sunlight that reaches the zooxanthellae, which is essentially bad for us because this is where we live. Reef building corals require warm water conditions to survive because these warm water conditions, along with sunlight, provide photosynthesis to keep the coral reef functioning. To get a true understanding of what it's like down here in, in the coral reef for us fish, I'm going to introduce you to the type, our type of soil quality. Our soil quality is an underwater buildup of calcium carbonate. It is formed by 
coral secreting their exoskeleton and other animals that uh, surround the coral reef that use it for uh, their habitat and their food supply. So it's basically like a mud substance that's made out of calcium carbonate and debris. Our food web starts with phytoplankton, a photosynthetic primary producer that receives its energy from the sun and does not need to consume any organism in order to survive. The phytoplankton is consumed by zooplankton, a primary consumer. The zooplankton is then consumed by some secondary consumers. These include the fanworm, the blue chromis, the sea sponge, and the coral polyps. The fanworm is eaten by the tertiary consumer, the puffer fish. The coral polyps are eaten by another tertiary consumer, the sea slug. The sea sponge is eaten by the angelfish, and finally, the angelfish, the blue chromis, and the butterfly fish are all consumed by the tertiary consumer, the reef shark. The food webs are a very important factor in the safeguard of the coral reef ecosystem. Our food webs protect the fragile balance there is between us species. There are just the right amount of predators and prey within the trophic levels. We start to see the importance of the balance set by the food webs when we look at the consequences that come with interfering within these food webs. Oh, I didn't see you there. I was just playing with some of my starfish and jellyfish friends down in the coral reef. Did you ask about the alternate names of the coral reef? Is that what I heard? Well, I'm sorry to tell you we don't have any alternate names. However, we do have three main types of coral reefs, and that is the fringing, the barrier, and the atoll. The fringing is the type of coral reef that grows seaward directly from the shore. They form borders along shoreline and surrounding islands. The next type is the barrier. Those coral reefs are important because they bring in billions of dollars to our economy through tourism, protecting coastal homes from storms, support promising medical treatments, and provide a home for millions of aquatic species. However, I'm a part of the last and final type of coral reef, the atoll. This is my home right here, the home that I'm very much happy at. The atoll is a ring-shaped coral reef island or series of islets, and they surround a body of water called a lagoon. Sometimes atolls and lagoons protect the central island. Channels between islets connect the lagoon to open sea ocean or the sea area. This is my little tour right here, and I'm very happy. These are some of my friends. Now that I'm done telling you about our coral reef, I'm gonna give you a little insight into what our favorite thing to do down here in the coral reef is. Party! <laughs> Good time.